I started stripping this uh, espresso machine. Let's just use stuff there. Use it over and over again. But it's turning off pretty decent after a polish. This is after I gotta polish that some more. That was just hand polished. And this is just stripped. And you can kind of see where it's faded there. That's where the clear had peeled off. That's where the clear was still on it. No, it's not, it's stripped off. But I'll just slowly go around and strip all the junk off of this thing. Okay, so I had a little time today, so I thought I would polish some on the did the wheels last week. And so now I'm in a mood to polish. And this one I'd polish with just a, a ball and it doesn't I don't know if you can see those streaks in there or not. This isn't quite as clean as I'd like it to be, as opposed to like that one there. The shine's just a bit brighter and clearer. Here's what it is without having anything on it. You can see where the clear, I'd stripped off the clear, and then here it was already flaked off and patinaed out. I don't mind a little patina, but I don't want it to look all ratty like that, so. I'm gonna polish it up full shine and then let it patina on its own. There's a medium there where it looks really awesome in patina, but uh, you can see how much brighter the, chrome, the brass is right there compared to that one. At least I can anyway. It's darker in the holes because of the residue, but anyway. Get those buffed up, and then on to the big piece. And for those who care to see how I'm doing this, Well, that's about as far as I can get without, with having it on the ground. Then I have to raise it up and shoot it from each side. But I'll turn it off now. As you can see, most as with most everything we do, it's pretty boring except for the results. Okay, so last time I sanded the top of these first and then buffed it, and I just used again the the mother's ball, so that's what it called, to buff it, and I didn't get the scratches out. So I'm going to try and do it straight up. And you see it's working out better so far as far as getting a mirror. I'll hit this with that too and see if it works better, but. finished I removed the emblems and uh, cleaned up behind there there's just one bolt on the back so it's easiest to polish them while they're bolted up but to get all that junker out, out of the back you got to take them off and I would do the same thing to these but these are riveted on and those holes are so small you can't really tell what's behind there anyway but they look pretty decent next it's on to the big pieces well, I woke up to minus 20 this morning, so I figure what better day to stay inside than it's nice and sunny out, but we're supposed to be hitting over 20 by the weekend, but I figure today's a good day to tear this apart and polish it. Well, we can see how nice that's polishing out. I'm not going to bother showing you how we're 
doing it you already know how boring that is but there's kind of the before and after everything's all disassembled now all the pieces parts so I'll just kind of show you steps as I go along Isn't that pretty? Oh boy, so here's the main body all disassembled and all the little pieces parts. It didn't seem like it was too difficult. I should be able to figure out putting it back together. I got a before picture. But uh, the electrical was fried in it. Obviously got hot and overheated. I don't know what in the heck that is. If that's a dial or some sort of European plug-in or hell if I know. I don't know what any of this stuff is, so I'll have to do some research online to figure that out. I'm sure it needs all new wiring. These aren't even plugged in here. And I don't know if I want to keep this functional and actually use it. Or if I should just rip it apart and put another whole guts inside of it so I can use something more modern. These aren't old in my opinion anyway as far as what dealing with 1800 stuff that I'm used to and I can't tell this backing plate doesn't look like it's actually copper I don't think so otherwise it wouldn't have rust on it yeah so it's got to be made of something else I am guessing and then is it probably stainless coated then copper coated I don't know how I'm gonna do this and get the copper coating to where it looks good when somebody's already sanded through to the stainless maybe I'll draw a line somewhere and make it taper up, I don't know, we'll have to see. Or do I strip it off and make it all stainless? Or like I said, do I just get myself a sheet of copper, put it in there, rip out all this front gut stuff, and just put a whole different machine in it? I guess I'll find out. But I might as well clean up all this stuff anyway, either way. These group heads are kind of cool. That's the part that goes into the tank, just runs in there and sucks off the bottom, I guess, off the pressure. But uh, when you pull the lever down, it actually pulls it up, not down. So that group head has got a crack in it, in the seal. So I don't know how much it is to rebuild all this stuff anyways. These things are heavy, I'll tell you that. I mean, this pr thing probably weighs, geez, 30 pounds? Doesn't look like it, but it is heavy stuff. Anyway, that's where we're at now. All that stuff's all polished up and looking pretty. Finished my dome. And again, the dome isn't actually a brass dome because I've rubbed through on a couple spots to where you can see like right there, there's that circle where I've burned through. It's not really brass, it's probably a stainless bowl that's plated. So, like I said, as far as antiques go, these aren't old in my opinion. It's not like everything's made out of real stuff. Like the 1800s, early 1900s. Junk that we usually work on. But maybe somebody knows out there how to fix this crap and can let me know if it's expensive or if it's worth just gutting it and throwing something else in there. Or do I just leave it alone, put it back together and go for the, leave it there for the looks? So this is my lazy man's descaling method. Got the compressor on, 80 gallons. Lock in an air line. Change the angle every once in a while. Just let it blow all that crap out of there. And then you change sides. As you can see, it's working pretty good. Okay, so there it is all finished, put together. These group heads were so caked with junk coffee stains and whatever else I had to use uh, the same stripper to take the lacquer off 
the outside of it to get the coffee stains off the group heads. And then I had some, I polished up the nuts too, took those off. And they had just normal washers on there. See the rest of the mess, I've been cleaning this mess up that it made. But I had some of these uh, bronze bolts and washers. So I polished some of those up and put them behind there. Sell that or not, but and then I stinking put this on. I cracked it, so I gotta get another one. I crack the end, it's not where it's visible, so it displays fine. But if I ever want to use this thing, I'm gonna need to replace that. I kind of don't like the way this shows behind here. This is just the frame piece. I think I see this is notched, I think I may notch that the rest of the way. So this comes in, it does it on both sides, but I don't like it. I guess that's supposed to bolt to that. I don't know. Maybe I can polish that too, I don't know. But for the time being, I think that's fine. Eagle's all polished up. Polish the back too. It gets all dented up, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't display much, but I just polished it anyways. But we've got an antique building downtown with all sorts of this kind of stuff in it. Coffee grinders like that. So all sorts of junk that's in there that's old like that. Anyways, turned out pretty good I think. <laughs>